So passing config data from the firmware to the operating system, for example, training data for memory as, uh, on Intel platforms is currently only possible for through proprietary um, um, components. So opening it up would make the development on many, many platforms way easier. So that's actually been done, or um, at least in the works. And uh, so next two speakers are going to introduce you to that concept. So please give a warm round of applause uh, to Zarati and <laughs> not Tarasan. Good afternoon. Uh, I know it's lunchtime. I will try to make it quick so that we can get to lunch quicker. Um, anyway, so this is the same talk we gave in uh, OCP in uh, San Jose. So uh, we have a little bit more information. So that's why I brought, I mean, Sardi actually came with me to present this uh, additional data, what we have. OK, so let's start. Um, of course, so everybody knows, I mean, we are here because we know the advantages of open standards and open source, right? Um, like, I mean, he introduced us. Uh, so basically, there are, we have some standard, I mean, many standards now, but there are some gaps we find, particularly in terms of like um, training data, memory training data, how we get it. Um, so this is mainly about that and uh, how we can close that gap and going forward. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have some, I mean, standard on DMTF, like SMBIAS, Red, uh, Redfish, and we have ACPA tables, and there are so many different tables related to memory and all the different things. And we also have JTAG specifications on DIM SPD data. So these are all standards we have already. And uh, there is a gap, like I mentioned, uh, particularly the DRAM, DIM and training data. So we know that in the reference code actually does most of the training and uh, that training data is usually passed to the next layer. And uh, it's up to many times we have to just look at the BIOS or the firmware logs to figure out what is the training data we get, right? So that's okay if you are doing like once in a while, uh, like let's say bring up and things. But if we are looking at a large scale deployment and uh, monitoring different things, then that's not the, um, that's not scalable basically, right? So basic proposal is, uh, pro I mean, proposal uh, is basically to get the ACPI table and uh, make it more flexible so that right now we are in um, DDR4 and then let's say we DDR5 and also like different training data, not only like memory, right? The BIOS actually does a lot of, uh, things in the earlier uh, initialization stage. So we want to get this out so that uh, it can be expandable uh, to different data set. So uh, that's the main point we are trying to make here. OK, again, so what, what is the usage case? So one is the DIM uh, repair workflow. Um, and uh, another way, I mean, like I said, to get a holistic view of uh, data center operations. Okay. Probably I will, we go through the next explanation about what we miss and what we have. Then I can explain you more detail on what uh, workflow cases I want to talk about. And uh, let Saradi talk about the next things. Thanks, Shivagar. So basically, uh, as he mentioned, right, there's a lot of um, DIM specific training data that needs to be exposed to the operating system entities so they can make decisions based on the margining, uh, whether a DIM is close to the margin or whether it is you know, healthy and things like that. So there are a bunch of information that uh, needs to get passed. But uh, apart from that, there's also SPD information that needs to get passed. So the OS entities can go and directly read the SPD data from the DIMMs. But the problem with that one is we have something called closed loop thermal throttling. So the memory controller keeps pulling for the using the uh, SM bus to go read the uh, you know, TSOT or the temperature sensor on die. 
to the, do the throttling. So that bus is taken over right, in runtime. So when the BMC or the OS entities want to go and talk to it and read it, read the SPD information, it's not possible. Right? So a better way for it for this data to get exposed is by surfacing this by, in a, by a standard mechanism. Right? So uh, it has, of course, SD, SPD is a JTX standard. Right? We all know how they all look like, but they keep evolving for different technologies as well. So um, even you know, if you look at um, you know when the when the memory controller comes up and it trains um, memory for uh, different configurations, different memory vendors, DIMM vendors. So these things will change, right? Based on platform, you can't do it for one platform and scale it for multiple platforms. It's a platform specific data. So and then um, basically MRC goes through the whole thing. It will train. It will find healthy DIMMs. It does post package repair. Uh, it can go and uh, disable some channels if it needs to, or, or offline some memory if it needs to, and then it will create a handoff block and it passes it on to the next stage of firmware. Right? And basically, this hub is then used to uh, build your ACPI tables, your SMBIOS tables, and things like that. And you know, we have generic things like you know, SRAC table, SLIT table. For NUMA descriptions, we have HMAT table, um, heterogeneous memory attributes table. We have NFIT table, you know, things like that. This all describes the memory topology of the system, but they don't describe the memory timing parameters. Right? So what we have is uh, um, we do have a table called a BDAC table. Um, it's called a uh, BIOS data area SPI table, right? And the, um, that table is basically today uh, is in a proprietary form. Right? So now, you know, the, the firmware basically uh, builds the ACPI table, the SMBIOS tables, things like that. Uh, but the BMC has to go and read from the DIM modules or directly read from the memory controller, which, as I said before, is not possible with CLTT. Uh, so uh, all the OSS or drivers can. Um, Needs to also go talk to memory controller or SPD uh, modules directly. So today, what we have here is the OEM specific structures in here, uh, the BIOS uh, ACPA table. Both these are proprietary. So what I mean by the OEM specific structures are this: the ACPA table itself is going to carry some raw data, right? Because this data moves with technology; it evolves with technology. It changes from vendor to vendor from silicon to silicon. So instead of changing SPA spec every time there's a change in the technology, we are providing a raw data in SPA table. That's all that we give, right? And the raw data, to make sense out of the raw data, we provide schemas, which are in a public domain. So there will be a, a grid that matches the, the schema to the raw data, so you can make sense out of it. So that's the uh, basic idea here. So when you see here the OEM specific structures, that's pretty much uh, the schema that describes the um, uh, ACPI uh, beta structure. And this is also, I think, this diagram points to some bias structures, not the uh, schemas. So the goal here is to not you know, make it proprietary, make it open. Uh, so we are working on the ACPI ECR to create a BDAT uh, table in ACPI. And we're also working to um, basically push through yeah, opening up the schemas. So it's, it's already approved. So we're going to publicly um, um, put the spec out in public and uh, have some schemas out there to tie into the ACPI spec. Yeah, sure, you want to take off from here? So this is the one I, I mean, talking about like what is the usage class, right? Um, <clears throat> so Sarathi talked about, I mean, the training data, what, how it can be useful in the bigger sense. Uh, so like for example, let's say I know that some of the, um, what do you call it? Um, I know certain systems are like not in within the margin, or it's going to fail. At least I can make a decision from the view in a 
bigger view that not to schedule a job or maybe try to have a certain job schedule in a certain things, right? So that's what uh, we want to do in a bigger view. So one of the example is like, so we can build a system somewhere and then we can ship it to a, um, let's say a data center or somewhere, right? And when we power on, so sometimes we want to make sure that the data, when we build the system, whatever the RMT data we get, which is the rank margining tool data, is a similar or same as the one, right? If not, then there is something not, either it's not inserted properly, uh, something else is happening. And uh, I know it will be, if in the worst case, the DIM will be will not show up in the memory at all, I mean, in the uh, detector at all, or disabled by the training data. So that's easier case. But if the margin is a little bit less, I want to catch it before even I run anything on it. So that's the main approach, I mean, we want to see. Uh, so that's why I, we need the training data in addition to the SPD and other information. Uh, so these are like just general what we have right now in the SMIR structures and why there is some gaps, right? So like Sardi explained it. So we have explained, I mean, the, uh, what we, what do you call it? It's a topology of the memory and the types and everything, but we don't have exactly the uh, error type and other information, not error exactly, but more like a margining data, right? Uh, so uh, again, in SMBIAS, most of the time, if the DIM is disabled, you won't get any structure filled in most of the time. And so that means that I don't know that there, there's supposed to be a DIM which is disabled. So that's one thing um, we here we can find out. And what else? So it's all general information about SMBIAS. And Sardi talked about SRAT and the slit tables. Um, sorry, I'm just rushing through because I prefer people ask questions and we answer. That's much more better than reading the slides or I telling you something, okay? And most of you, I mean, you know, it, this all in the spec, that's what I mean. And so let's give a little bit more on the BDAT structure, right? So BDAT structure, I like the structure, so I find it's mostly disabled in the BIAS and it still needs some work, which we are working through. But the main idea is, so it provide a header in the ACPI and give you a pointer to somewhere in 64 bit memory where there is a raw data. And that raw data contains schemas, multiple schemas. And the schema, again, uh, it has a standard header, which is a GUID. And from the GUID, you know what's the data behind it, right? So that I find is much more flexible. So in that sense, like right now we, we have um, already the BDAT have multiple versions of data. And going forward, I like to propose in the open standard, which me, Sardi and me will, I mean, working through. So we want to publish some standard schemas first, okay? And in an open forum and then get that approved. And going, I mean, then we can add multiple schemas over it. So basically start with simple SPD data or simple timing data, and then we can expand more. Because right now the data is very complicated. Like it's literally packed all the data into one big schema, which is more, I mean, much harder to pass, okay? And so that's the BDAT. So like, uh, so we are, this is what we are proposing basically. So Sardi is already working through to publish the BDAT table in the open public forum. And uh, already there is a ECR in Flux to add the BDAT table. And then we are working through getting the right schemas defined and publish it in the future uh, open forums. And this will actually basically what I, I mean, my like bigger goal is to have the support in the kernels and in various kernels built into it so that we can have access to this data by CISFS nodes or other mechanisms so that it's easier for higher stack to use that data. Okay. It's uh, so basic thing is like, we just want the community to help and then we, work together to have all these things properly set up and uh, want to add anything. Yeah, so basically, um, this is uh, right now a, you know, a proprietary table, right? So when op by opening it up, it scales across multiple vendors and multiple technologies. So not just memory, but if we you know, can come up with things that a OS entity might need to know about the platform, which is not today present in any form by ACPA or SMBIOS or whatever, then we can add schemas to it and make it more flexible. So, you know, if you guys can think of any such usages, 
you know maybe there are a lot of training that the bias does not just memory right uh, the interconnects between cpus that uh, bias trains and things like that so if you guys you know feel like that is something that we need to bring in then this uh, makes a lot more makes it more flexible to add those things uh, later on so that's pretty much uh, and when shivagar uh, said initially that he'll make it fast because he go for, go for lunch he really meant it so <laughs> i'm really hungry <laughs> My lunch time is usually eleven thirty. <laughs> yeah, um, we are open for questions. Anyway, thank you. Let's have a round of applause. Big round of applause. Open standards are so important. So we have infinite time for questions. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so Shivagar, go ahead. Be Line between, up between your lunch and <laughs> your talk. We are going to be you know, holding that. No. So. Quick thing, right? Like uh, the GUIDED structures, like where, when you talked about uh, those, uh, like, uh, do you anticipate one for DDR3, DDR4, DDR5? Is it how you panned out those? I mean, how, uh, or is it memory vendor specific uh, can be GUIDED too? So, our, I mean, in the open thing, we want to be standard specific. I mean, like DDR3, DDR4. Okay. But if it's anything uh, proprietary, that yeah. can also be accommodated. Okay. So that's why the schema approach, right? So I want to have something similar, I mean, like common thing. So you know that if there is something, I mean, in this structure, you have at least DDR4 timing data. Yeah. And then if anything else, it's uh, up to the particular driver and the proprietary things yeah. on the schema. Yeah. The, yeah. Then the other thing is like uh, MRC today, and like if uh, the system is not uh, rebooted in 90 days or something, we go reestablish the parameters. I mean, there are certain... Uh, uh, mechanisms in place in the MRC, the way it is implemented in server, right? So uh, the one thing that you talked about, uh, exposing the data to the operating system, but the other one is out-of-band telemetry. How do you push this data to out-of-band telemetry? How do you anticipate that to uh, take place? Because, uh, the one thing that you alluded to was you will prevent, uh, um, you know, putting VMs or containers uh, based on if the, if the life is wearing out of a dim or something, right? Uh, for you to take such a decision, it has to be done not inside the node, but it has to be somehow pushed outside the node. But if the, limits, uh, the node itself is faulty, how, how do you anticipate uh, those mechanisms, uh, the data to be, I mean, basically telemetry, what is the telemetry story that is surrounding uh, the training yes. that you uh, kind of establish? You know? Yeah. Um, so it's true, but the one I was more interested in is like so there is two different thing right one is runtime related data yeah so that you can get from other mechanism like pecky or other things but the training related data that i know it's not every server is rebooting multiple times yeah. but when it's reboot whatever data we collect we like export it so the right now it's available in sysfs there will be a driver above it which exposed to the higher layer and there will be a outside monitoring things which captures that so it knows what's the difference between the two different uh, values and also it knows that other servers in the same vicinity other things have a different rmt so then it will can make a decision that okay something wrong in this particular uh system so okay. probably i don't i need to look at that one so that's what i mean yeah, yeah. this is basically a, a static um, way of collecting data yes. it's not a runtime telemetry per se it's uh, information that the bios produces during boot yeah, yeah, I know yeah, so, it does. Uh, okay, uh, so what you're saying is, just prior to the OS or during the OS handoff, you still send the data across over the wire or something. Yeah. And While uh, and then uh, only after that you start. Uh, uh, I mean, allocating VMs are based on whatever yeah. resources. Are. Okay, that's basically you're weeding out any outliers that may be there. Yeah, but you have a point about the BMC as well, yeah. right? So any yeah. out of band uh, entities that want to. Use this data. Yes, yes. Maybe we can enhance the driver to talk IPMI to or Redfish to the BMC. I, right? I believe that there is a story that needs to be filled because right. it's like multiple subscribers, not just OS is the only subscriber to this data that you're publishing. They got to be an out of band uh, listener to the same yep. data too. Yep. So that that's something that I feel is also needs to be complemented. So that's for the last line. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I see that. <laughs> Okay, I just have a simple question. Is uh, now you have the dim information, right? That the bus is, uh, no, it may not be 100% yet, right? Yeah. Yep. And so, how are you dealing with the situation if you use the Intel machine, AMD machine, or ARM server? 
Yeah, so that's where the schema comes in play. So, oh. so we can have a common schema which actually addresses that. It's it's not a technology specific. It's more like I mean, it's a media for technology specific, not the platform specific, basically. I have a simple question as well. Yeah. So do you need the actual data or do you need the intelligence out of the data? So if if bias tells you the margin on this dim is not good, is that enough or uh, would you rather have the actual data and make the decision yourself? Uh, this is only the data. So I want the higher layer to handle the actual intelligence. So I think your question was if uh, if you can give a percentage of margin instead of the actual raw data, will it make it more sense? Yeah. Um, it depends. Yeah. But yeah. in this case, actually, it doesn't matter. So as long as I can take some value, like uh, what do you say, comparison to different thing, right? I know there is a difference which I can clearly say there is uh, something is not right. Then it's good. Yeah. So we even percentage a... is good. We actually had a use case where we did something, but the bias determines if the margin was good uh, uh, warning or critical, and then um, we'll pass that information to the voice. It will trigger a memory retraining if required. Okay. Okay. So accounting for thermal variations. And sure, like sure. So I think uh, you have a point though that because if you're going to have any information that the vendor doesn't want to public, right? Could be could be very like a you know trade secret kind of exactly. thing, right? So basically, they would they might want to not publish the data, right? And instead, can give you a percentage. Yeah. So things like that. that work. Which is fine, actually. That's what Thank you. So the main aim is to find that I can find that particular thing is bad. So it doesn't matter. So perhaps a, a follow up to that question. Seems like if you get enough of this data standardized and exposed to the OS, then we can reduce the number of system management interrupts and maybe obviate the need for protected runtime mechanism. <laughs> sort of talking about the intelligence, not <laughs> necessary, could be in an operating system driver. That's a little bit different. Later that's that's a little different, I think. Yeah, static uh, thing. Is this a stat it's a more a static thing than a runtime thing? So. All right. Hey, one question about this uh, mechanism you're trying to standardize the interface to pass information, right? So country they also has an SMBOS table there, and now it's an SAPI table to do the same thing. So how do you um, propose which information we should pass through the SMBOS interface versus the SAPI interface? What's going to be the trend going forward for that? Actually, there is no SMBOS related Thing for exactly this part, though. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But but what I'm saying that SMBOS is kind of an interface where DMR you can pass information from your firmware to OS domain. Yeah. Right? So that's also a path. But so how, uh, if you got a data, how do you determine which side you want to do? Yeah, agree. But the SMBOS one problem is the structure has to be like 255 bytes. Okay. So that's a very big limit actually. So that's another why I like this one. So you can expand much more. I mean, more data. So basically. SAPI could be the new Mode, yeah. interface going from right. Okay. okay. And also, we can have pointers to uh, SMBAS uh, structures, right? So basically, you know which data basically maps to which physical DIM. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just like can fit. Right? Like I said, we have at least an infinite amount of, of time for questions. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I think. See, everybody's hungry. Okay, if everybody's you, hungry. right. If there are no more questions, <laughs> then I will leave you to uh, go to lunch. Please have a warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys, you. for your work. Thank you.